So once again, good afternoon everyone. I am Louise. And I am Pao. To start, I would like to introduce and welcome Mr. Paul Amerigo Pao Jr., Director of the Nil Hi Fi, to set the context for our SI talk. Thank you for that introduction. Welcome to this talk. Uh, this is uh, under Binild Hi-Fi. Uh, Hi-Fi stands for Hub of Innovation for Inclusion. It's a community space and business incubator for social good startups in Binild and beyond. Uh, the Peter D. Garuccio Jr. Innovation Institute, which is the building uh, where Binild Hi-Fi is housed, opens its arms to all who wish to create and scale social impact. Our purpose is to build a just and humane society that includes the least, the lost, and the last. And our philosophy is telling everyone that the school is the logical place to grow enlightened, empowered, and compassionate citizens who shall become the seeds of social reform. Uh, this is the context in which we are doing the social innovation talks. Also, on, on that note, Binild Hi-Fi is now a technology business incubator under the DOST program. A TBI, a technology business uh, incubator, is uh, a place where a government is uh, incentivizing uh, Filipinos uh, to create uh, technology startups in technology enterprise. Uh, Binild is one of those uh, TBIs. Uh, we are part of the latest cohort of TBIs for this year. Uh, DOST PCR uh, received a total of 89 applications from different HEIs in the country and chose 40. Binild Hi-Fi was deemed number one in terms of readiness as a, a TBI. So Binild Hi-Fi is now classified as an accredited TBI with the shared goal to promote technopreneurship by nurturing financially viable business startups to sustainable operations. This initiative will enable us to develop entrepreneurs, create jobs, and promote public-private partnerships in regional economic development. So founded in 2016 and hosted, as I mentioned, in the Peter D. Garuccio Innovations Institute, uh, if you're a summer around the area in Taft near the De La Salle Binyod uh, campus, there is a separate building, uh, which is very good looking. So uh, if you want to visit, just inform. We open our doors to provide office spaces, facilities, and analytical laboratories. We will all also offer technical, administrative, business development, marketing assistance, intellectual property management, and legal counseling services, all needed during the dev developmental stage of technology entrepreneurs. So part of the, the TBI team is uh, Mr. Robin Serrano under the Benil Partnership Advancement together with uh, the Benil Center for Intellectual uh, Property Management or the CIPM Director Attorney Jenny Tejano. Our Benil Partnership Advancement Officer, Ms. Patricia Gomanera, who's also in this uh, webinar today. Uh, our Hi-Fi Incubation Coordinator, Alex Abiyar, and uh, our Hi-Fi Entrepreneur in Residence who will be giving the social innovation talk today, Kamil Arbarasin. And of course, I'm the OIC Director for Binad Hi-Fi and also Acting uh, TBI Manager. So uh, we hope that uh, in listening to this talk, this will encourage you to create your own social enterprise startup. Uh, Binil being a TBI, we will be actually focusing on the creative industries, being that our uh, being that our uh, school, the uh, South College of Saint Binil, have very good uh, programs in the creative industries such as fashion design management, um, multimedia arts, architecture, industrial engineering, and many other programs. So we hope as you are listening. Uh, you will be encouraged to be part of us. We do have a incubation program called the Benil Trailblazer Startup Program or the BTS for those of you who are part of the Purple Army. Uh, that's a reference to that. So uh, we hope that you can apply uh, given the uh, links that will be provided to you. It's also on my background. So on that note, uh, thank you for your time today and I hope uh, you'll be able to listen and learn from Ms. Camille Abarasin's social innovation talk today. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Sir Paul, for setting the context for today's afternoon's talk. Let us all welcome with a virtual applause, Architect Alex. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. So yeah, uh, as introduced by uh, 
Luis. Uh, I'm architect Alex Abiar. I'm the from the incubation management unit of um, HiFi, and yeah, welcome to Sit Talks. Basically, uh, si Sir Paul already introduced what HiFi is all about. Uh, actually, our main topic today is really about uh, how to start a social enterprise uh, with Miss Camila Albarasin of Everything Green. But uh, for context, uh, let me just briefly share to you what is HiFi Vinyl Trailblazer Startup and why are we doing this? The Vinyl Trailblazer Startup. So yes, you're probably wondering what is a TBI? Uh, a TBI means Technology Business Incubator. That's a facility or unit where startups are hosted and businesses are developed. Yeah, so we provide services. Yeah. So DLST funded TBIs offer office space as well as technical services and facilities for would-be technology entrepreneurs and startups to get their uh, businesses established. So aside from us, the college or universities, there are a lot of role players in the startup ecosystem because building a startup is not a walk in the park. Most especially if we are targeting and uh, we should be targeting to be a startup unicorn in the next three to five years. So as you might see, we have here industry experts, non-government organizations, of course, the government. So a short history of... Uh, Hi-Fi's incubation program, we started with Vinyl Prize. It is a competition to promote innovation. So we also partnered with various institutions that is aligned to our mission in promoting innovation and inclusion and reached out to the grassroots level. So we have Siliman University or Youth University and Ateneo Dinaga to name some of our partners, uh, startup enablers in the country. And uh, afterwards, uh, 2016 to 2021, from Binil Prize, the Binil Hi-Fi Incubation Program also evolved to the Homebrew Program. So of course, the winners from the Binil Prize needs to be supported or developed further. Thus, the creation of the uh, Homebrew Program, which is the first incubation program of Binil. So far, here are some of the incubated projects from the various programs of Binil. Simultaneously, while we were running the Homebrew program in 2020, the Future Shapers program was born. So the Future Shapers program is a fellowship program for aspiring startups for social good and inclusion. So to name some of our top incubated projects, we have here Hamu from our fashion design and merchandising program. So they are designers of fun, sustainable, and gender-inclusive clothing. So they make sure to make the most uh, out of their resources with intelligent sourcing and techniques to create these beautiful pieces of clothing. So as you might notice, they are actually recognized internationally and featured in various programs or shows like Page Tokyo Mentorship Program and uh, Palais de Tokyo. Uh, you might also see some of their works worn by artists like James Reed, Nadine Lustre and Rico Blanco to name some. And the uh, next one is from our very own industrial design program, Camulo. She's a designer and producer of sustainable furniture. She upcycles denim retaso and construction waste like rebars in her pieces. They were also featured before in some of our local news channels like ANC. Next one. Let's Learn Ballet. Basically, Let's Learn Ballet is a workbook from our very own Miss Nina Nonas from the Performing Arts Dance Chair no, of Binil. So the workbook was conceptualized uh, during the pre-pandemic uh, 2019. So... It was also developed during pandemic when it was actually needed. No? Aside from it addresses to Gen Z learners, it also bridged the physical learning challenges brought about by the pandemic. This workbook was published and launched uh, last year, 2021. And the importance or help of the workbook was actually recognized by various non ballet teachers or performers like uh, our very own Filipino prima ballerina, Ms. Uh, Liza Makuha Elizalde. And of course, the Filipino Sign Language app is a companion tool for FSL learners in Binil. The app was developed in collaboration with uh, various programs in Binil like School of Deaf and Applied Studies, Multimedia Arts Information 
systems. DAP is still being developed and accessible through Google Play Store and Apple Store. So it is currently being developed to version 2 and funded by Accenture. As you might see, we've been here since 2016. And yes, like any other startups we help, we also continuously develop and innovate. We are now relaunching Benil's long history of incubation program to the BTS or Benil Trailblazer Startup Army. So who can apply to this program? Basically, all Benilians and Lasallians are welcome to join our program. So you may register your capstone or any project to our link that we will share in a few. So in addition, here are some of the value-add that HiFi is bringing as mandated by DOST PBI. Among all these value-adds, I want you to focus at the middle part. So that's the red and the orange one. So HiFi is currently focusing first on these two. So what's that? So that's uh, startup discovery and uh, capstone projects as tiny product. So let me explain this to you further. A tiny product to start with an educational product first. What is an educational product? An educational product means any research or like a way white paper or thesis, no? So for example, this is my thesis when I was in college. Basically, what Amy Hoy said, start with this, no? So we add a product layer, we make it sellable, and we sell it. For the small product, small investment of time and resources, they get a taste of the product life. So product life, that's building, selling, learning, and repeating that cycle. So while you do this, you actually build traction. No? And another point is you can gain product experience through this uh, journey. Actually, if you have a new idea or project, HiFi already considers you as a founder. You're a founder of that idea. And yes, from the tiny product, there's really an endless possible things that we can do. For example, if your product or project is patentable, we can register that through the help of uh, CIPM or incubate that with the help of HiFi. What we really want to do is to enable and empower the, the Benilgen community through the development of the following. So this is the incubation journey. So we want to start developing first the founder, then we proceed to developing the creative tech product, and then we develop the business. So the next step for HiFi really is to uh, build a capstone database where everyone can register their uh, projects or ideas. No? And from that capstone database, there's there are actually many uh, columns that uh, our incubators can go to. So number one, we have curation. Number two, we have crowdfunding. Number three, we have incubation. And number four, we have acceleration. So what do we mean by this or what are the four columns? So first one is the portfolio curation. So portfolio curation helps Benil introduce itself to the community and stakeholders, it helps establish deal flow. So deal flow is really the exchange, no? Uh, basically, it's making deals, no? So monetary. So, but for me, deal flow doesn't only mean monetary deal, but it can also mean deals that promotes collaboration, opportunities, etc. So, for example, this is just a prototype. What we have here are projects from fashion design and merchandising. We just featured some of the names uh, or authors, uh, project title and abstract. So from here, uh, our partners can actually have a sense or support our projects moving forward. And uh, next one is the crowdfunding. So building from the tiny product, the crowdfunding can help us gain product experience and of course gain funding. By mobilizing our projects, not only do we get funding, but we will also gain feedback from customers and gain traction along the way. So we're partnered with the Spark Project in this initiative. In addition to the crowdfunding that you will get, HiFi will further amplify uh, this energy to support our young founders by matching the accumulated crowdfund. That means uh, there will be a force multiplier, meaning you'll still work for your project, but we will reward you with that force multiplier. So for context, we're doing this now with the Spark project. And uh, that means we have free access to their curator page uh, and free workshop. 
So this is not free. Uh, we have 2,500 listing fee and they charge 10% uh, commission as their platform fee and 15% commission for those who exceed. But yeah, you don't have to worry about that because uh, HiFi can uh, cover that for you. So yes, this is basically the flow of how we gain the product experience through crowdfunding. So of course, we need to start from the artist or entrepreneur, then you upload it to their crowdfunding website and you do a campaign. So from that campaign, you get feedback from the community. So what are the benefits from this? So number one, you can accelerate your launch. Uh, it can build and reconnect you to the community around work, brand, or cost. Gives your brand exposure online, connect you to more opportunities, and raise awareness about your passions, interests, and projects. Next one is our incubation bootcamp which is now actually a complementary to the crowdfunding column. In a nutshell, our goal now, aside from finding the next startup unicorn, is to make our projects patentable and crowdfundable. So this is a direct translation of the incubation journey where we develop the founder, the tech, and the business uh, and translated to the following bootcamps. And we also have acceleration in which for those who are already in the highest level, of readiness, we connect them to the accelerator network. So yes, step one is really to do your academic requirements. And afterwards, you can upload that to the Capstone database in which we can, you have an option to be uh, featured in the portfolio page or undergo the bootcamp or crowdfunding or acceleration. So now we use this TBI or DOS, the metrics level uh, to assess your ideas or project. First one is the technology readiness level. Uh, so basically that's uh, from concept to actual proven metrics. Now. And that goes the same to the investment readiness level. Again. So here are the following entry levels. Uh, based on your readiness level. So if you want to be featured in the portfolio creation, you just need a uh, technology readiness level one. And of course, if crowdfunding, you need to reach at this uh, technology and uh, investment readiness level four. And uh, if you're not that confident or ready yet, you can go in the following bootcamp. So founder bootcamp, creative tech and business tech. And of course, the highest level is the acceleration. We are actually uh, about to begin our social innovation bootcamp this August 6th. No? But yes, you can still um, follow and uh, register your ideas in the our database. Actually, we encourage you to do so. We might be able to help you also develop your thesis along the way. So please register your ideas. If you have questions, please feel free to get in touch with us. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Alex, for unpacking the Benil Trailblazer Startup Incubation Program, or BTS. Now it's time to welcome our main speaker, Ms. Camille Albersin. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes. Yeah, so I'm very thrilled to really share my story, my entrepreneurial story. Uh, and I think this is the best way to actually be able to like communicate how to really start to set up your own social enterprise. So um, let me begin by sharing my screen. Yeah, so probably before I go to, um, to that, I'll introduce myself and so that you would know uh, the story behind why and the reason why I started my own social eco-enterprise. So let me begin um, by, by showing you this photo. Actually, I came from a big family. We're a family of seven, and um, we have two photos here. The first uh, photo below is was taken in 2002 um, when my dad was still alive. And then my uh, we did a remake of the, the same photo with the exact clothes, <laughs> but now a bigger, a bigger family. Uh, this is during 2019, during my mom's 80th birthday. And... Uh, the reason why I'm sharing this is because my parents were actually very instrumental of, uh, to me because um, they, they actually, since they are doctors and um, uh, my, father and, uh, my, my, my father and my mom are both doctors and we actually lived in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, 
And um, they were actually part of uh, 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 the World uh, Developmental, um, World Develop through WHO before. And they worked there for more than 18 years. So they have actually exemplified the true meaning of service. So as early as the age of four and five, nakikita ko na yon. I've seen that. I've seen that. Uh, I've seen that they have modeled that to me. And um, being exposed as well, I also rep I usually represent the Philippines. So I'm really very proud of our own roots and culture, um, especially when uh, it's time to, uh, there's like a United Nations event. Usually I represent and really, really proud of having to wear a Filipiniana at the age of five <laughs> during my school days, my, uh, my younger years. And then um, just to add on that as well, I have a very supportive husband. As the saying goes, <laughs> um, uh, happy wife is also happy life. My husband, by the way, is also a, an entrepreneur and he's also a photographer and he's also a crafter. He's actually more creative than me. Oh yeah, and um, uh, good thing is that um, my husband has been a very, uh, very. Uh, he was actually one of my main source of also having these ideas. And then since he has the 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 talent in terms of crafts, yeah. So there, and then I am also proud <laughs> to be a Miaomi. To actually five, I haven't included updated the slide with uh five uh with one of our. Uh, for babies, but they're actually they, they're actually five, five for babies. And um, another fact about me is that I love shoes. Working in the hospitality industry, we were trained actually to wear heels, and then we had to wear, um, and then to also be like glamorous, um, and and also be able to uh express ourselves through fashion. And um, presenting ourselves at the hospital in the hotel or in the hospitality industry in such a way that um, we have that sophistication and we, uh, especially since we are the ones at, at the front, so we're also part of the front desk. So now, um, given this, probably you are asking. So Camille, why are you sharing these photos? Why was it? What's the connection um, of these photos or your story? to actually, to your own social enterprise. So I will get to that later in a while. And I, I just love this photo because it also shows a photo of a cat, which I am a cat lover and proud to, I am a proud uh, meow me, yeah. So let's go to my why. Um, as mentioned earlier, um, I started in the hospitality industry for more than 15 years and I've seen this. I was one, um, I was one witness to this. Um, I'm not really sure if uh, our audience here, um, uh, because I'm a 90s baby, I'm not really sure if you're fond of watching. Um, I think Friends is still on Netflix, but yeah, this is one um, actually episode of, uh, of Friends. It's a popular um, uh, comedy sitcom in the US. And I think I, I just love, I just love the entire uh, TV, this TV show. So this is actually Ross Geller calling guest services or calling um, uh, the hotel uh, operator and asking for more and more uh, toiletries, more and more um, uh, hotel supplies. This is for the reason that probably he wanted to get the value of his money because I believe he, they, he was surprised in this episode. He was surprised by the price that they paid for the hotel stay. That's why he wanted to maximize that. And um and apparently this is has an effect and I've seen this. It this may seem very funny for for and this could be relatable, but for our guests usually when we stay, um, the 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 truth is that um for one for one guest to stay in a ho hotel, you can actually generate at least one kilo of waste per night. So I have witnessed that firsthand, and I've seen how much. Um, waste uh, has been generated um, all throughout the number of days or the, all throughout the number of stays or the number of guests. So, and I felt bad about it. And I actually cringe about it, seeing that the affected, the affected um, um, uh, life, especially in the ocean life. Since I think I have a, a soft spot for animals, that's why I am also very 
um, I get really, um, uh, I feel bad whenever I see plastic waste in the ocean. And that is my story. And that's the reason why uh, my social enterprise was born. But before that, let me also give you a little backstory. In 2012, um, uh, I was exposed when I was actually, when my boss resigned or retired, I, I was given a task to do, do and organize a first international conference on educating for the future we want. It's actually on, uh, on, e, uh, on, on education on sustainable development. And I was required that that event should all use sustainable products. And it was quite a challenge in 2012 because we don't have those, um, uh, uh, like the, uh, for instance, the straws that we have right now, um, the, what we call the metal straws and the other sustainable products that are available right now back then. So I was just thinking, how can I actually incorporate sustainability in events? Since I've, I've been working in the uh, uh, hospitality industry and in, in the, also in the events management. So I was given this task. And gladly, I was able to really put some of ideas. But however, I also realized that some of the items are not available here in the Philippines. And it has to be imported. So it imported, um, uh, imported um, from other countries, which means that it actually uh, breaks the purpose or defeats the purpose of how come we don't have these local products available here in the Philippines and we still have to import, it, import them from other, from other parts of the world. And then, of course, I did my research because I still had that heavy feeling. I now studied at Benilde and took up my master's in tourism and hospitality management. And my pers perspective about this even grew, uh, grew much bigger. <laughs> and um, the curiosity was even bigger um, because I, ha I have um, now opportunities to really focus on doing more research and having to also have like classmates or peer-to-peer um, uh, -peer learning together with my batchmates in MSDHM in Benil. So just a quick story of my, uh, of my uh, master's um, um, experience at Benil as well. And this is again related to who I am right now. Okay, so we, I remember we also went to um, uh, Tacloban Leyte and we've also seen like one of our projects actually was to visit um, the Yolanda victims or the Yolanda sites after a year. So that's, this was in 2014. And I also seen this. And I really felt bad again and again and again. I said, this typhoons um, is, is really effects of climate change. And actually, we are somehow at fault because of the waste that we produce. And now I came back again to my industry, which is the hospitality industry. And um, I was given also the opportunity to become a third party auditor for the pilot accreditation standards for accommodation by the Department of Tourism. And here was the chance to also check and do a benchmark, not just check, not just benchmark, I'm sorry, not just, but to also check where are we right now in terms of sustainability? And I was also given the chance to audit uh, uh, hotels and see what, 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 how can we improve or how can we incorporate sustainability in the hotel industry? Um, and then luckily, I was also given um, the opportunity to have a practicum training in China. So I also already have the local perspective. And now I have the the uh the, an, an international uh perspective and we had a 30 day i think a one month training at, um at uh at mission hills in china and i've seen that this hotel that we we selected actually where we trained was a carbon neutral hotel and i said to myself if other countries can do this bakit hindi kaya dito sa philippines this is now an opportunity for me to learn and be able to apply it here in the philippines so when I came back here again in, uh, um, in the Philippines, and I, it was very, very timely that that was actually the same day, <laughs> that same week where I had to submit my practicum report before graduation. And then we had another conference, an international conference, wherein I also organized this. 
it was about inclusive education. It was about thriving in the margins for inclusion. And this exposure, again, opened my mind in terms of connecting sustainability plus inclusion plus the hospitality industry. So all of those exposure came up now with this idea of having my own social enterprise. Fast forward, I was able to graduate <laughs> thanks to um, uh, my practicum um, advisor. And uh, thank you as well to my very supportive husband again in 2015. And in 2018, um, I left the hospitality industry. But this again was because of personal reasons, because me and my husband, we were trying to also have our own family of our own. And um, because uh, uh, as you know, uh, in the hotel or in the events management, it's really very uh, physically, you get physically tired and that I was advised to do like a little rest. And that's the reason why I resigned. And very timely enough, um, while um, I couldn't stay at home, <laughs> I couldn't stay at home because uh, in 2018, that's why I started to attend similar events like this. I attend a caring cup, um, caring cup event. It's actually a free event by by Coffee Bean, if I can mention brands here. And then uh, Reese Fernandez of R Rags to Riches was one of the speaker, and uh, and then one speaker was from Mad Travel. I hope you. Uh, they are also both. They're both social enterprises, and I was really inspired. And I said, "Hey, I think I can do this." Um, and I feel that. Having to know all that exposure and having to be in the hospitality industry, it's my time to give back to the community and as well as to give back and be able to contribute uh, uh, in terms of sustainability in my own industry. So I, um, and then luckily, I told my, hus my husband, um, probably I can just do consultancy work. It's lighter uh, as of the moment um, since I don't really need to, to go to go out every day and then just do consultancy work. Luckily, again, I was tapped by the Forest Management Bureau to do their events management, sustainable events and exhibitors management system. This is for the Department of Environment and Natural Resources under, under the Forest Management Bureau. So again, it was aligned in terms of sustainability. And I was very, very happy about this because it also gave me an avenue to meet a partner community under the CBFM, what we call the community-based forest management. So this is one, uh, one uh, photo of where I visited the community and they presented me a material. Uh, it, it was actually a, uh, an agri-waste material called bakbak. It's the, the waste or the, the, leaf sheet, the, uh, the leaf sheet of the abaka. So this is where I met Jomar and Ate. Um, and they knew how to do um, mga simple slippers. Nang sabi ko, this is their perfect material. And this is the perfect idea for a hotel slipper. And then, yeah, this is Jomar here. And then we have the Kabihog tribe uh, as one of the indigenous people. And then this is where Grinellas was born. So Grinellas is actually a play of words between using the words green and chinelas. Um, and then, um, interesting talaga that if you manifest that this is what you want and this is your intention, things will actually fall into place. And I was lucky to actually, not really lucky, but blessed to meet the people, the right people and the right community at the right time. And I was not, I did not, I, I, I was also open then to opportunities, opportunities uh, and businesses such as this. Okay, and then, uh, funny story lang, ano? this was actually the first prototype of Grinellas. It was, it looks like, um, I actually did some drawing and explained to the community, this is, this is what the hotel slippers look like. And funny that they did not actually get right away my drawing because I was not an artist in the first place. I was not part of the footwear industry in the first place. So, anong ginagawa ng isang hotelier in an industry that she doesn't really know? <laughs> diba? So, and then, if you see, medyo crude pa yung, the, the, in terms of the design, it's really crude. And then, I said, okay, no worries, let's just try this. Uh, as mentioned, diba, we have that tiny product, uh, tiny products. So, we started with this tiny product. This very crude, tiny product na 
walang, walang um, it wasn't well thought of yet during that time. And I tested it right away. I attended my nephews. Um, they had this garage sale at school. I think um, in Laguna. This is for uh, Waldorf School, and they were very into they were into sustainability and said, "I said, so this is the right time for me to just just um, share or just share my um, share my product, which is Grinellas." And the first logo was actually still the same logo that we're you're, you're use, we're using at this time. And then I sold it for three for 100 pesos. And surprisingly, in one hour, all the 50 pairs were sold. Yeah. So, so it was kind of surprising because I didn't expect that people would be interested out of agricultural waste. And then that validated also my idea. And that also validated that this product has potential. Again, this was in 2018. Okay. Um, and then we had to innovate already. We started to do other products using coconut core, using abaca, etc. And then my first ever um uh, attended uh my uh we we have this uh the good trade. It's actually a in uh, Central Square. It's all about sustainable products. This is my first ever uh not really a trade show, uh, more of a bazaar, but the market was in BGC. And again, it had the same traction. <laughs> it had the same um, uh, acceptance by the, uh, by the guests or by the people or the buyers. So yeah, so yun, nakakatawa. And luckily again, I was able to meet one of the owners of a nail salon. And she said that, how much can I buy? Can I buy this product? Can I order already? Especially the slippers. This matches my salon and this matches my uh, our values, which is also to help communities uh, um, uh, such as yours. And then she mentioned that she has this, she we shared the same value. So fast forward, we were able to get an order from, if I can mention brands here. <laughs> from uh, Neil Tropics. So th they had a total of 18, uh, 18 um, uh, branches all over the all over Metro Manila. And then we were able to also get attraction from the U Hotel, where I stayed there just for a casual stay and presented my slipper. And then right away, we got a purchase order. And then uh, um, another company is an, my international organiz an international organization where I used to work, which is Simio Inotech. So these are my first three, uh, three, three, three clients. And if I just maintain these three clients, I could actually earn right away and be able to really um, reach out to more communities. However, the challenge was, sorry, the challenge was I did not know the production side. I did not study the production side. I accepted and pur a purchase order without even thinking because I was thinking, okay, 500 pairs is also similar or the same process will be done if people would order 5,000 pairs. I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. I was wrong. So what I did was I exposed myself in the fashion industry. Since I'm from a hotelier, I I learned I went to Marikina, um, and then learned shoemaking, slipper making 101 because I had to learn the process first for me to be able to teach it to the community and and the POs are already there and they're the the dates were already running and we weren't ready to deliver the purchase orders that I accepted because I was so excited. I was really excited that, okay, that the idea has so much potential, the product has so, I was really fascinated with our, uh, with the product. And uh, here on the left side is also a group of fashion, um, uh, fashion group, it's fibers. I exposed myself again to various um, uh, fashion uh, designers and even to the footwear industry for me to be able to understand the, the the ins and outs of the fashion industry as well as specifically the footwear industry okay and I, as i as i went along as well i was also part i was also incubated by make sense because i think it's really important for businesses to be incubated 
one way or another because this would help uh, entrepreneurs such as me when I started in 2018 so that they, it would actually guide you and then also build and have that founder's um founder's value and be able to establish because having a startup is very very difficult and having a social enterprise is much challenging much challenging so having a simple startup na business na traditional business what more pa kaya social enterprise to so it's really hard so yan yeah i expose myself to fashion pollution to fibers to make sense so that I know who the people are, who sino ba yung nasa ecosystem natin. So that I am also well aware of what I and I also need, since I need sources and information, I had to go and expose myself and really attend and meet people because that's the only way that I can learn. Okay, and luckily again we were able to set up um uh two separate businesses. Sinasabi ko nga eh, I always save this. It takes two communities to actually have or to actually create one pair of grinellas. And because of this, again, we were able to provide not just a livelihood, but a sustaining, um, hopefully in 2018 and 2019 then, uh, a self-sustaining um, uh, enterprise for our persons with disabilities, specific, specific to the, uh, to the deaf, uh, deaf community as well. So we had 32 PWD artisans, and then we also had, um, from the Bicol group naman, we had 36 uh, families in Bicol, including um, a women's group in Bicol. So if you can see, I had to do everything in a span of, that's in 2018, 2019, we had to create our workshop very, very fast and, um, and set up and replicate the one in Bicol here in Quezon City because it's much easier in terms of the supply chain. Okay, and now, um, because of that as well, um, we created our mission. Alam mo nung time na, wala pa akong mission vision statement eh, kasi I was focused on Grinellas. But now, parang, uh, during that time then, sabi, we ha you, you have to know your mission. So, our mission uh, was to really to create eco-solutions and innovative products through empowered Filipino craftsmanship and expertise to help make industries more sustainable. Thus, this is the mission of Everything Green. And in 2019, we were able to sell 12,000 pairs uh, to various hotels, in um, uh, uh, hotels, resorts, and even B2B and B2C clients. We were able to partner with three partner communities, provide and impact 68 artisans in Bicol and here in Quezon City and in Gumaca. And we also had three awards for both local and international. Um, and I am very proud to say as well that I was the first uh, beat awardee of um of uh yeah the the Benildian um uh, Technopreneur Award uh together again with uh, Animo Labs and DOST. So I am a recipient of this. That is why this is my time again to really give back to to the entre entrepreneurs like aspiring entrepreneurs here. Here in uh, here in Benil, because I was actually been also helped um, by Animo Labs and Benil um, in terms of growing my business. Okay, and then I also represented the Philippines uh, during the APEC Financing Opportunity Fair uh, in Taiwan. I was nominated by the uh, uh, Philippine Women Commission on Women, which I met yesterday again. Um, Yusek Sandy was I met I met I met her for a DTI event yesterday. And, and I told her that um, we haven't really met face to face. This was the first time. And I told her that um, I really thanked her that, uh, and then we won, the Philippines won while I represented uh, the Philippines in terms of, amongst the different Southeast Asian in terms of, and then I pitched actually Grinellas, yeah. And then um, as mentioned, learning has never stopped. I still continued to learn. And I think it's very, 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 very important to keep uh, learning um, in terms of um, uh, having been exposed or also having to know your fellow entrepreneurs. So Animo Labs were there. We also had ESIP and then we also applied for uh, Idea Space uh, uh, way back in 2019 and 2020. And then we were featured in different magazines in Cebu Pacific. We were even 
uh, nominated for the 2019 MOVE Award, uh, MOVE PH Ambassador for Entrepreneurship and Social Development. We were featured in CNN, etc., and in Shop Talk and various um, uh, uh, media platforms. And then we thought we were ready for 2020 because in 2019, we were already getting orders for hotel chains, international hotel chains. So I think we thought that we're ready for the export market. And our, our vision was very big and bright <laughs> during the 2020. And then, of course, we didn't know that the pandemic will happen. So paano na? Yeah, that was the question that was led to me. So imagine that you are still starting and then a pandemic like this had hit us so hard. That is why we had to come up with a solution. So the operations of Everything Green was at halt during the lockdown, rendering our persons with disability and our partner communities beneficiaries out of work and zero income. And this is where we had a, um, a, a creativity and problems problem solving workshop because I cannot do this alone. I had to ask people who believed in my project or in my startup and ask them, what can we do and have this kind of workshop? And again, um, we had this uh, crowdfunding. So the, the uh, crowdfunding campaign was really to help our beneficiary, beneficiaries with the basic necessities during the, the community quarantine lockdown. And this is where we launched the Walang Iwanan Food for Everyone. By the way, this is Jomar. He was the also he's also the same uh, person in the first photo I showed in Bicol. Um, he's he is now our our supervisor here in the Quezon City um Quezon City office, and he is also from the deaf community. Yeah, so we launched that, and we had to pivot because since our market is the hospitality industry, and obviously there is no guest or there is there are no um uh hotels so hotels had to cancel all their po's to us and it was very very difficult for us then so we we had a crowdfunding campaign um featuring our different eco lifestyle products so, so we had to pivot not only for grinellas but other products as well okay so time check i still have time right yeah <laughs> so now we ventured into uh various Shoes, bags, corporate giveaways, um, uh, pouches, and then we also had hand painted products. So we collaborated with fellow social entrepreneurs, and in fact, Defy Studio, uh, Defy Studio, who is also a Benilian, helped us paint our product so that it would be more, um, uh, more, uh, would actually be more, uh, what do you call this? Uh, the design would be more elevated as well. So, um. I mean, during this time of pandemic, we had to become more creative. And the pandemic has never stopped us to become creative because since we are also part of the creative industry, the pandemic was never a reason for us to stop on doing what we are doing. Yeah, and, and then yeah, just showing some of the products. Yeah, and then these are the results of the crowdfunding campaign because all of, uh, um, like, we got it from the pre-orders that we got. So we were able to actually provide for them during the lockdown. And surprisingly, at the peak of the lockdown, we co collaborated um, with the military. And we, I was the one personally packing and delivering the items um, to our PWD community. And we and then some of the collaborators was um, actually EcoNest, one of uh, another social uh, enterprise who does um, um, use uh, cassava bags. So ito yung ginamit natin na packaging. So the entire campaign was also sustainable. Not just the... Uh, and then we also had to partner with um, uh, with farmers. And then I think we had one partner, uh, Agrea, who is also uh, a social enterprise. They provide fruits and vegetables. So our food packs were actually healthy uh, food packs because things like mga fruits and vegetables that were in season during the time and uh, not just the typical noodles, but these were healthy foods so that we um, provide the wellness of our beneficiary. So this time, it was it, uh, the question was, the crowdfunding campaign was not enough. What would be the goals? 
how can our enterprise survive? And then when will the hospitality bounce, hospitality industry bounce back? That was the question. So it was very, very, very difficult for us because I wanted to quit. I really wanted to quit. To be honest, it would be easier to quit. But I never, I, I, I did not quit. Instead, one of my mentors told me, Camille, you don't have to quit. You just have to pivot and don't pause. Tuloy-tuloy pa rin ang laban. Tuloy pa rin natin tong laban because many people, even their crowdfunding campaign was a success. And then people believe in what you're doing because of the social cost that you have and the sustainability that cost that you have. So um, this, kept, this kept me going. And this was actually the fuel uh, fuel to me to keep on moving. Ayan. So Pivot and don't pause. So, and I was also, I was even told by my mentor, pivot fast and pivot now. And, and also check, what does the market need now? And then the question is, do we join the bandwagon? Because people, again, were doing all the face masks during the time. So we had our first pivot. Um, we had our own version of our own abaka bamboo face mask using abaka waste and bamboo waste. As our first product. And again, si Jomar is now our model. Diba? <laughs> Jomar is now our model. Um, and then uh, our second pivot was, do we change the business model? And then I was, I was told by another mentor, Camille, you do not have to force your business to adopt to COVID-19. Remember to go back to your why. Because that's important. Because sometimes if you force something that you are not, Kumbaga, hindi na ikaw yan eh. Hindi na yun yan. Hindi na, that's not your true self anymore. That's not the true identity about, of what everything dream is. So I had to reflect and pause and go back to my why. So now, um, since 2020, instead of Grinellas as the flagship brand, we had everything green as the flagship brand. Um, sorry, yeah. So we have the less waste, more pos possibilities tagline because now we wanted to help companies uh, to really, uh, in terms of their waste problem, and then replace them and provide them with greener alternatives. And then we also wanted to transform waste into anything valuable. So we had to not just focus on one industry, but now multi in, multi, multiple industries as well, and also reach out to more communities. So in terms of circularity, this is like, a, just to give you like an idea, um, for instance, one bamboo company, um, uh, had their waste um then we had to collect and seg they had to segregate their waste and then here comes um everything green to collect and then the waste and also uh be able to uh renovate uh the products and turn it up and upcycle their products and turn it into a face mask for in for example and this face mask could actually be used by their own people for their own operations as well so sabiko this is where we go this is where we are at this point not specifically the hotel industry but regardless of what hotel or what industry it is we can still help because we have ideas and during that time pala I was just a solo I didn't have a team behind me it was just me and then we had um admin people uh in and out uh the startup it's really hard to hire people the right people um I was a solo founder then I did not have any uh other founders together with me yeah, so talagang mahirap siya. And then, we had this new product. We partnered again um, with um, ocean, using ocean plastic waste. Uh, and then we combined it with a natural material called Sulia. So we had this product uh, during the pandemic. Now we focus now on homeware. So nag-pivot kami to B2B to, B2, to B2C. Ayan. So this is an example of our product for B2C. And then here comes the League of Corporate Foundation. A city foundation who helped us as well. And then we also tapped the ESG funds because of um the companies as well for, for their corporate giveaways. And we were now available online through our Linker store, which was given to us by DTI. So it's now important that you collaborate with different various sectors like the government, um, uh, the, the social, other social enterprises. It's really important that you have to also reach out to them and gladly they would actually help you as well. Yeah, so yeah, and, and then um we even had our packaging, uh packaging um uh products. Um we had our own version of the Tempipi box using abaca and pandan uh 
for for this time. Talagang sobra kaming naging creative niyan. Alam mo yon. Talagang non-stop talaga kami for for being kit. Kung ano yung market demand and what which was relevant uh, to the market, yun yung pinoproduce namin. And in fact, we have this. Um, uh, uh, it was found in some of the malls as well. We had the packaging for uh, 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 what do you call this? A condiments caddy for another brand here. And then, yeah, this is the Living Green Collection. And then another social enterprise wanted to elevate the slippers, their slippers. And then we provided them with a, with a new version of their slippers using water lily and water hyacinth. And we also had this technology using um, leatherized, leatherized water lily. And then we had the self-care and wellness collection. And then um, uh, another one is a sneaker. And then we provided them with um, with the insoles. Ayan. Uh, and I'm re I'm very very thankful to then to the women who supported me, um, especially uh, the the women in the in intellectual property because our products again this is very important. You have to register your products uh, in terms of the design. So my tr my uh, everything green is already a registered trademark. Grinellas also is a registered uh is also a registered trademark. And then in terms of the design, we had our industrial design approved as well. And then um the utility model of uh the abaca waste um in terms of doing the slippers is on process because I think it's very IP is very, 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 very important. I couldn't stress that enough. So it's very important. And we were recognized last year for the International Women's Day for becoming on a Women Beyond Innovation and Creativity, specifically to sustainability. I was one of the many inventors, uh, designers, um, uh, um, uh, what do you call this, the writers. So I was one of them. So I'm very, very happy to be part of the women in IP. And then last year as well, um, medyo slow yung internet ko, we were also, um, uh, we had this first virtual runway titled This Post. We were supported by the British Council. So this was the first ever um, featuring AgriWaste to footwear accessories by the UK designers and PH artisans. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, yeah. So I'm very excited talaga about this because once we featured this, Kumbaga, hindi na kami for local alone. Kumbaga, we also had an international market using various products like this. So we had a design hackathon um, uh, with, with three UK designers partnering with 18 PH artisans from four regions and uh, 12 products as well. So I have my UK, counter, UK counterpart, Miss Erica Santiago, who is also a designer there. And here are some of our weavers in Bicol. Um, and this is Ate jo. Um, who has been helping us with the cocoa coir. So talagang, uh, and then uh, here's Jenny with the pili nut shells for the accessories and the lanyard. And then DTI Sorsogon uh, were, was also sponsored us for this event, uh, for us to be able to come up with new products. And then we were also featured on Fashion Week Online uh, for, the, for the first ever um, collaborative virtual runway. Uh, and then uh, and, and, and Ascent Magazine, which is a, a uh, I believe, a UK magazine. We were also fe featured there. And then CNN, um, the, the, the story of the Filipino. So my story was also shared as well there. And, and of course, we never stopped really creating. And then, but now we had to clear up. Kasi sa, sa sobrang dami namin ginagawa, it's, it's now the time to have like, a, to convey clarity and calmness and create cohesiveness to our clients. That's why we wanted to do another round of a brand study. Anyway, so now, as mentioned before, I used to be just one entrepreneur, but luckily, and I'm really, really blessed that we have, we're now a three, three team. We have um, Miss Buena Sawit, who is our designer and production and um, trade, uh, uh, who's focusing on trading and um Miss Leminda Maranon um who is our research and innovation catalyst 
she is actually a forester by profession, which I met her through FMB and DNR in 2018. And I have Joyce Payumo, who is also a team, who is our project curator. So these women comes from different backgrounds. We have a designer uh, through a clothing tech siya, it was si Buen, and then we have a forester to also measure our, our impact. And then we have Miss Joyce Payumo as well. So aside from trading, we also have our consultancy services. So talagang nag-grow, nag-grow na, nag-grow na talaga yung yung company by not just having to it's really important to also diversify uh diversify your products as well ayan so ayan so and then last week actually we also entered into um we had a dnr event as well uh through region 3 about economic valuation of ecosystems in protected areas so ngayon we're thinking of hindi lang talaga not just the supply but also the farmers that we're working with because for us to be able to have like a constant supply chain and then the protected areas because we want na the, the, the supply that we're getting also being kubaga, the sustainability practices are still there and that we're not we're not actually um uh looking into uh or stepping stepping into the protected areas. So there's also an economic valuation. Talagang, if you look at our system, it's now a system thinking model that we have for our business model. Ayan. So I was also uh, a consultant to an uh, to a international uh, social enterprise based in Australia and the global south, which is Includubate. It's Includubate for inclusion. And yeah, here are some of our uh, partner partner and clients like for our consultancy services. So now let's go to the lessons learned during this pandemic. And I think as a startup and as an entrepreneur and even as an aspiring entrepreneur, it's very, very important. Number one is to have self-care. Lagi kong nakakalimutan ko. And I have to constantly remind myself, Camille and the team, that self-care is important because you cannot offer anybody your ideas, your products, if you're running empty. And number two, you have to hone self-awareness. It's very important that you know yourself. You know who you are. That's why I've showed on the first photos who I am. Yung galing ako sa hospitality industry, my family, kumbaga, who my identity is. Because it's very important that your ideas, hindi naman instant yan eh. It's not like automatic you'll have those ideas right away. It's actually uh, um, several stages. It goes through a long process. Like me, I was in the hospitality industry. I was exposed. Um, by various events, I was given challenges and tasks. I I did research and development. I studied. Um, I I I even um studied my masters and got my masters in Benilde. So that to hone my strengths as well. And then number two, engage your community. With, engage with your community. Now ne never underestimate the power of community. And digital presence is very and the digital digital presence is really important. Um, meaning that if you have your own tribe and people believe in you, use that. Use that as your power. Use that as your fuel. Number three, pause and go back to your why. I remember Sir Robin mentioned to me in one of the um one of the mentorship sessions. He mentioned to me that Camille, um, you know what? What I like is that uh your business plan has always changed because for Benil, we we and uh, Animal Labs, you had to review, um, even HiFi helped me review my business plans. You know what? Even your business plans have to change constantly because of this pandemic. It was really crazy, but your mission plan remained. That's that's that that's one thing that had impacted me so much. Yeah, that's what Sir Robin mentioned. So pause and go back to your why, and then pivot as needed and be relevant. And then import, it's really important to validate as well. And did I go over time? Sorry. <laughs> I have oh yeah, yeah, more time. And I had just have some tips again about honing self-awareness. Um, it's really important that you ask for insights. If you're starting and you have this crazy idea and you think that you don't want to know if this is right. Ask for insights, get tips from people, and then also get feedback. And then relate it to yourself. Is this something that I want? Is this something that I am passionate about? Because sometimes, those sabi nga nila, passion is not enough. You have to become more practical than 
And then also know your strengths. Alam alamin mo din kung anong strengths mo. Use use test like 16 PF or use strengths finder. Then watch yourself literally practice if you want to talk to people, uh record yourself um and then make notes and pe ask people how how am I? So how do I convey my message? And then what are your pain points? If whatever industry you are, whether you're in fashion, whether you are in um in the hospitality industry whether you're an architect or whether you have an unrelated product that is not in your course ask yourself what are the pain points and how can you actually relate to these pain points and be able to look for a solution to this okay um so of course again social entrepreneurship is very very different from your standard standard uh traditional business because you are very um you are actually uh grounded by your mission which has the economic social cultural and environmental mission and of course aligned to the public or your community benefic beneficiary but still if you have a strong mission don't forget to how to align this to your own values you stay you have to keep yourself um authentic Stay true and authenticity is still important. Stay true to yourself because it will reflect kung sino ka as an entrepreneur and who sino ka as a founder. Yeah. And then um, there are so several business models for social enterprises. And uh, yun nga, uh, and I think ours, pa iba iba kami ng business model. We were once B2B, we were once B2C, and then we had beneficiaries here. Then we had several several beneficiaries and then we change again so it's really but now i'm i'm just telling us that the three things are important having people planet in prosperity and then share your heart and stay authentic so it's about connection over perfection at this time are you able to connect or convey your products and your services to the right audience and to your audience that share your own you share the same values so it's now connection over perfection so um, af after this, we again change our vision. Before, our vision was just to revolutionize the hospitality industry. But now, as the founder of Everything Green, our vision today is to accelerate growth of multi-sectoral innovative solutions globally. This is what we want. This is what we see. This is what I see five to 10 years from now that we'll be having multi-sectoral innovative solutions not just the hotel industry, not just the tourism industry, but several industries as well. And, and using a systems thinking uh, methodology. So what's up? So what's next? So we'll also be relaunching everything, uh, everything green soon again, because we had, uh, we, we had to really like tell, tell the people that, um, and tell our clients and customers that, hey, we're here. We're re actually relaunching very soon. So now it's your turn. So I'm very, very excited to be part of Benilde Hi-Fi because I want to hear your ideas. I want to hear your stories. And let's, well, let's, um, we'll help you on that. And then we'll also help you to also build your ideas. But if you're already, you have already an existing product, let us know. So yeah, I thank you very much. And if you have questions, please let me know. Yeah, so let's strive and renovate together. Thank you very much. So now let me invite our facilitator, Mr. Paul Pajo, together with our speakers. Thanks for that. So uh, I'd like to ask a question first. Your, your last slide, you said uh, you now have all these services uh, added to uh, the everything green like a portfolio. Why, why do you think uh, these services are needed? So I'm sure there's a story behind it. So maybe you can elaborate because a lot of those things on the list, even the last one with the end, DNR, it looks like there are very uh, new things in the ecosystem. Maybe you can elaborate on that. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Sir Paul. Um, because I believe, like during the pandemic as well, um, uh, we also wanted to also share that our consultancy pro pro uh, consultancy services. Because in even in 2018, I registered as everything green trading and consulting. We started with the trading because of the Greenellas products. In the consultancy, because we wanted to really push for sustainable operations, and this is what I already, I this is what part of what I do while I was in the hotel industry, like teaching um, different hotels in terms of sustainable operations. But now, um, 
uh, I feel that it's really also important to diversify your products because products, orders of products may not be consistent, right? Even though you have hotels there, unless you have established like, um, if, for instance, there would be a pandemic. Sana naman, hindi, di ba? Wag naman sana. At least you have a backup source of income or source, source of uh, revenue stream, which is the consultancy services. Because our clients, again, for the consultancy services are government agencies, uh, intergovernmental agencies, and non-business. Because what we want is to also mainstream sustainability by teaching them na ito po yung need ng private sector and the, the ecosystem. That's why you have to come in and also join. That's why um, with the expertise of um, our forester and uh, our, our, our resident uh, scientist, Ms. Lei Maranon, who can also give insights. And then we also have a pool of uh, various um, experts in terms of sustainability champions. Like we have a one, uh, one expert in, in terms of economic valuation, um, not agricultural waste, uh, circularity. So we have this pool of experts. Para any topic, kumbaga system nga yung tinatanaan natin, system yung in the target natin so that it means that everybody should work hand in hand so that's why we have the consultancy services that we offer for uh, for, for instance for DNR or the Department of Natural Resources kasi da, sila dapat yung unang-unang nagpa-practice ng sustainability because they are DNR in terms of their operations and sila din dapat yung mag walk the talk right so in terms of their events management then yan yes siguro um yeah, building from ano no what uh, Miss Camille just shared. I mean, it's a really really uh, long story, no. Uh, yeah, as Miss Camille mentioned, it's not really that ano no walk in the park to to build a startup. Uh, perhaps I'll ask Sir Paul, no, if uh, he can also give some tips to to our community and uh, our students on uh, those who are planning to to build a startup or who has an idea. Yeah, so I was in a startup networking event at Draper Startup House Manila a few days ago. And one of the people who were talking about mentors and all this stuff, and one of the things that I were asked, hey, where do I find these mentors? No? So I, I think uh, for us who has been in this uh, startup ecosystem for more than 10 years, I've been doing this uh, th since, uh, no, since uh, 1997, no, I started a computer uh, company in uh, Rangoon, Burma, uh, Myanmar. No? Uh, it's not obvious that uh, uh, many times the easiest way to start your journey, to start a mentor, is being incubated. Uh, because many, many times, no, the, the people that you approach, they also have, they're, they're also doing their own thing. For example, Ms. Camille, obviously she's very, very busy. She's also in the veteran residence. But uh, the way to gauge, uh, like if you ask them, hey, I want to ask about this idea. Uh, uh, sure, no, idea is good. But, but if, you, if you actually go to an incubator like uh, Binyald Hi-Fi or there's like 40 new incub TBIs, technology business incubators, there might be an incubator near you. You can go to Kubo. There's a lot of incubators. Incubators are, 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 very, are known from uh, incubating your idea to at least a prototype or even join a hackathon. No? So, so join, those, join those activities like an incubation or a hackathon. So that your idea doesn't just become an idea and it becomes something else, so it becomes a prototype. So now then you can uh, then you ask, ask people to mentor you. So in other words, uh, it's more meaningful for uh, other startup founders to mentor you if they see you already put in a little bit of effort, a little bit of time in turning your idea into something bigger than a, an idea, right? So. So that's my tip. You know? So we do have our BTS incubation program, the incubations for free. Uh, whatever idea it is, we'll, we'll try to uh, we'll try to make it uh, in, into something more than an idea. Uh, make it into something that's a product or a service that you can make money from, and you can turn it into a company. So that's my first tip. Uh, uh, sure, ideas are amazing, but uh, you know, uh, join join an incubator. Uh, join a hackathon, you know, uh, so so that uh, it's more meaningful for other startup founders to actually mentor you. Yes, and I, I think Miss Camille can also add to this, no? Uh, I think uh, Everything Green was also incubated 
with uh, yeah. animal labs, right? Yes, by animal labs as well. Uh, I was incubated by actually by by three by Make Sense Animal Labs um, and uh, and a short stint for a while by Idea Space for a pre accelerator program. But I think it's also important that um your 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 uh, to also find like for instance for Binyield Hi-Fi since we are focusing um uh we don't, for instance we're focusing more about um inclusion or something to do with impact. So you have to also align uh, your ideas or your, um, your, your, your startup idea with a certain uh, hi-fi or with, with a certain uh, incubator as well. But I also use that because the reason why I chose three, because I wanted to focus on the tech side and really, but I think with hi-fi, we can actually offer um, several uh, several services because also including the crowdfunding as you've mentioned earlier, Sir Paul and uh, Alex. Right, right, and yeah, I think no. Um, based on what you just presented, I think it really helped to to be uh, connected, no, with various um entrepreneurs and incubators, and yeah, um, siguro. What we can say to to our students is just to to do your thing, no. Do not be afraid. I mean, we we have this saying in in hi-fi that uh, what would you do if you're that afraid? And I think for Miss Camille, no, um, she she just really did what what she needs to do, no. Parang uh, from there, uh, she navigated to to what needs to be done. Sabi niya nga hindi siya expert sa paggawa ng chinelas, no, but but she explored. She she was not afraid. Uh, and yeah, look at her now. Diba? So do we have questions from our uh, chat? Miss Camille, I have a question. How hard was it for you to find out the process of making a chinelas? Because this, that was the start of your journey, right? So, yes. Uh, their question, Sir Paul, is how... How hard was it for you to find that out right uh, did you have to go to marikina yes. did you ask friends who uh, know how to make chinelas and then obviously there's a jump between making the chinelas uh, green uh, to the fabrication the all that side. so i, I want to know like what the amount of effort that that is like compared or and then also compare that to the normal chinelas making process how how, how different or how hard is it yeah Okay, actually, po, what I did was um, since we had already orders <laughs> with without for me actually without me being prepared, not looking at the back end. So immediate po yon. I immediately um, uh, good thing that we're very near Marikina, and I exposed myself again to the fashion industry. So we went to Marikina. I and I learned how to do my own uh, slippers. As in, in two days, I talaga inaral ko. And then I also hired um, one expert to study the, the the production process of the slippers. So we actually hired uh, the prototyping services of uh, of a creative hub in Marikina. And then um, I also brought our lead artisans here in Manila and also have them trained to do it. Since we already have the final prototype for the hotels, we had I had them here uh, trained here in Marikina. And then aside from that, I also had them check in in a hotel so they would understand the value of what they're doing. So, kailangan hindi lang ako yung exposed, but even the artisans, the partner artisans that we had, I had them also experience what it is to actually stay in a five-star hotel and what are the expectations. So, pati yun, yung, yung in, including the, the feel of the slippers. So, they know where to compare themselves at what level of expectation do they need to, to also execute yung in terms. Of, and then, um, we had uh, learned so much from uh, the Marikina and the fashion industry group, even the designers. So, stinadi din po namin. And then I even went to uh, to the National um, Abaca Research in Leyte. Stinadi ko pa yung material. And how do they grow the abaca? Ano ba yung ECS? And how do we say na sustainable farm yung yung ginagawa natin? So, yun. So, mada actually, I had efforts for re research and development talaga yun talaga yung naging main um uh 
main or core um, strength in me, everything green, to really greenovate those through research and development. Um, we have a question to here, Ms. Camille and architect and Sir Paul. Uh, in general, what do you recommend to a fresh grad student who wants to start a business? Should we go for employment first, investment, or start a small business? I think we can start with architect Alex. Yeah, I, I think uh, that really depends on you. I mean, we always leave it up to the entrepreneur to, to decide, no? Because uh, that's really the first step. I guess it also boils down to your personality, no? If you're like, if your personality is not to be under someone, then I guess it's it would be a nice to uh, explore right away, no? Uh, building your own business, and uh, if you have the means, uh, I mean, not everyone has the means, so I guess that really that also depends on your situation. Uh, how about you, Sir Paul, uh, Miss Camille? Yeah, uh, si Nasim Taleb had this quote. No, there's nothing more addicting in this world than ano, uh, cocaine and a monthly salary. So, so like uh, what Alex is saying, uh, I say this is a numbers game. No? There's probably five to ten percent, five to ten percent of our population who are natural entrepreneurs. No, that means uh, they're, they're the ones probably selling you T-shirts, everything. I'm sure you have a classmate, you have a friend that. Uh, Whenever you see them, they're always selling you something. These are natural entrepreneurs. So but that's about 5 to 10%. So let's say in Binil, that's, let's say our student population is about 4,000. So that means about 10%. Let's go for the maximum number. There's only about 400, no? 10%, 400 of those students who are entrepreneurs. So some of them, it was passed on to them by their their parents, no? Like we, we know all that. Uh, their, uh, their parents are entrepreneurs, their businesses, and the parents think, uh, you know, when when they they uh, when they're older, their kids will will uh, know will take over their business. But the problem with that is normally in the family, uh, it's okay kung ikaw, you're the only child, right? But what happens in the business is going to be passed on, and you have four other five other siblings, no? So uh, that's where all the family issues, right? Uh, or they have a family office, and they end up ano, ano, having all this. Uh, Weird board meeting. I've been, I've been in those board meetings. I've been invited as a consultant. So maybe we nagsisigawan sila in front of. Because <laughs> it's there's one business, but there are many kids, no. So the, so what happens is some of these uh, kids now end up uh, starting their own, no, because they they've been groomed all their life to take over their uh, parents' business, but it turns out they're not taking over their parents' business. They have to start something else. Now, out of the ten percent of the four hundred. There's another 10% of that that can become a startup, meaning a technology startup, technology enterprise, meaning there's some new technology that you need. This is what the OST uh, TBIs are say, uh, looking on. And that, it doesn't have the, like, tech, like you know, it's a computer. Like, although a lot of times it has some computer innovation because you want to programmatize it. So for example, maybe for uh, everything green, even the way the patterns of the chinelas, all that you have to put it into a computer, make it more efficient. So there's some uh, innovative technology. So when I'm telling you this story, when I'm telling you this story, uh, how you respond to the story kind of is what uh, kind of what is Alex is saying. When when I tell the story, hey, uh, maybe you're the ten percent. You say, yeah, yeah, I'm the ten percent, right? Uh, or or if I'm telling the story, oh, technology, uh, yeah, yeah, I wanna be the that that ten, that ten percent of the ten percent, then 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 you can do something about it. But if I'm telling this story, this is, does it excite you? Para in your mind, oh, I'd rather work for an employee. Then then the the thing you do there is, uh, you know, uh, well, going through the you know your job, you know, uh, what you can do is save some money, save some money, and then over weekends, you know, go to these events. Uh, incubate some of your ideas. Your incubation is free. No? A lot of the incubation programs in, in Hi-Fi, the TBIs, Kubo, Ideaspace, all that, it's free. No? So just submit your ideas, keep your job, keep your job, and work on your idea until it, until it, uh, it reaches to the point that you're making more money in your idea and you, know, you turn it into a company, you, know, you get one or two people running it. There will be a point when when you are making more money from your startup idea than your than your job. Then then you can leave then you can leave your then you can leave your job. I, I, some of my co-founders in my business, 
they they have jobs and they actually get they actually get promoted so that's their problem so yeah well, I just get promoted I'm an executive director now I have to attend more meetings but my other business uh, you know we're making five to ten million pesos a year so sabi ko lang, stay there I mean there will be a point when it becomes uncomfortable for you to maintain the two right and then you have to make a choice but if that's you and you'd rather be employed but you want you want to try this out then do it from the safety of your employment uh you know work with uh, incubators like us and explore it but the other people who are more entrepreneurially inclined uh they will naturally jump anyway like we don't even have to ask them they're the ones who will seek us out they, they, they they're the first ones to come to these kinds of webinars and ask us questions and email us after so hope that's uh, that's hope that's in uh helpful for you miss camille yes and yeah just to add on that as mentioned earlier uh during my talk i think honing self-awareness is very important because you have to know yourself first self-discovery muna but that's really important knowing what you want to do in the first place so yourself kubaga self-awareness muna knowing what you want to do and also what are your interests and then if you see that your line of interest is in into, into entrepreneurship or you want to learn more about this industry but you want to get employed first then then so be it but if you think um syempre hindi mo pa naman malalaman ako i didn't know 2018, I, I didn't even know that I'm going to do Grinella's or Hotel Slippers in 2018 while I was working. I just wanted to help the hospitality industry. And I saw the problem when I was still working na ang problema pala ay wala tayong local na sustainable slippers here in the Philippines. And we had to still store source it out. So that was an opportunity. So it depends. When the, when the right opportunity comes and if you see that the timing is right, yun. So dapat may consider yun timing, the right opportunity, and also the people that you meet, your exposure, your strength, and really have a strong self-awareness. Yeah, those are the tips that I could share with you. Yes, and I want to add to that. No? So from part of self-awareness also is sense-making. So that's why we're focusing on tiny products. In other words, when you're doing your capstone while you're in university, you're already investing your time in an idea. So for us, uh, we'd like you to turn your capstone into like a tiny product, you know, turn it into like a case study that you can put in a website, you can put it into our website. And then that, that means uh, people will know, oh, you're working pala on this idea. And then other people will contact you and they say, hey, we want to turn your idea into, you know, a bigger thing. At, at the same time, uh, it also demonstrates thought leadership if you're working on that already, then you kind of have ownership of it. Uh, uh, whatever happens, so 100 years from now, uh, your name and that idea will be in the library. You know? It will be in the LRC. You know? Hopefully, Binil still exists in 100 years. But your names uh, your, your, and your other thesis mates, your other capstone uh, colleagues who did the project, they will be associated with that idea. So you might as well work on that idea. That's why we're also very interested in uh, you know, Binil, uh, even the LaSalle community, working with our IP. Because uh, a lot of times we work on a lot of ideas and projects and then later when you try to see if it's, it can be patentable, it's commercial, can it be commercialized, it turns out someone else already thought about it. No, So you can still uh, apply a uh, utility, model utility patent on it, but it will be a little bit harder. But imagine if you can work on an idea that's original. So a lot of times when you go through a lot of these papers, there will be in the conclusion, uh, we've done this, but more work or more research should be done in this area because no research has been done. So if you start working there, your idea from the very get-go, from the start, is already original. And then if you have our IP check, and that's part of our incubation, we we actually have you work with our IP the our IP team para we can look how uh, how unique your idea is. So even if you don't actually implement the whole idea, the, the fact that you patent the idea or the, the process, the concept, you can even make money mm -hmm. from by licensing. So yeah, think think about those things. It's all about sense making, meaning making sense of what you have and what you're working on. And what can you uh, what can you you can work on based on what you already have, or within your realm of expert expertise or your domain of expert. Okay. Thank you, Sir Paul, Sir Paul, for that. Uh, one last question for the three of you: uh, What can you advise to someone who isn't sure about their idea is that is good for incubation for someone who who can't 
seem to step out of their comfort zone. Example for a student, what would you say to them to push them to take the risk? Yeah, siguro ako na lang muna, no? Um, yeah, very timely yung question kasi I was about to say, no, na we, we have a saying, no, that uh, don't be afraid. Uh, don't be afraid to fail. Fail fast, learn faster. So you, you just do your thing, no? It, uh, it doesn't matter if you fail uh, because if you do your thing, you will learn and you will develop something. Uh, I mean, look at Miss Camille, no? She started with the uh, chinelas, then uh, uh, she expanded her venture to to a bigger scope. No, so ngayon mas marami na siyang product, and uh, mas malaki na yung scope niya. Hindi hindi lang rin hospitality. So so ayun lang. Um, just do your thing. So sabi nga namin, no, first thing for us in IFI is for our students or community to register their ideas. Kasi once you registered your ideas or you claim that the idea is yours, then from there, we, we can basically build something or connect you some, with something. Kasi through collaboration and feedback from others, uh, that can also help you form something. No? So I guess ayun lang, uh, fail fast, learn faster. Yes, uh, to, ano, to add to what Alex is saying, uh, Actually, the story of Miss Camille is very rare. She's actually a rare, parang unicorn si Miss Camille, no? At first idea niya, nag-succeed. That's very rare, very rare, no? Many times, the average of a very successful startup in the U.S. is 45 years old. So that that means they probably start at around 40. That means they've, they've been employed, they've been working, and then they realize, hey, I, want, I really want to solve this problem, but they never really have a time. And then maybe they have a middle-age crisis. <laughs> they decide to work on it, and then suddenly... They fail a few times. So normally, a good successful, a good and successful entrepreneur is normally about 45 years old and they would have failed about three times. So what we're saying is you can now front load that by very early in your uh, uh, entrepreneur life. Join, join an incubation program. And uh, many times your idea, your first idea is very, very far away from the successful idea, it will become after six months. There will be a lot of pivots. There will be a lot of learnings. But that's the whole point. No? Uh, uh, engaging with an incubator allows you to actually work on your idea and find out if that idea is really worth working on. And uh, maybe you will fail. No, maybe, maybe there's a very big chance of failure. But what happens is you end up being... Hopefully, you become a serial, entre serial entrepreneur. You, you, you now have a new idea and... Uh, after that failed idea, you start working on another one. But this time, you're more wiser. No? You, after going to this incubation and after many, many pivots, you now, you now know all the, the things that uh, you're not supposed to do. And that becomes, uh, that becomes like your armamentarium. That becomes your parang fuel for the next phase of your entrepreneurship life. And normally, on your second or third try, uh, that's when you, you really, really succeed. So my, my tip is, uh, you might as well start now, right? Uh, I don't think you want to wait when you're 40 to start your entrepreneurial journey. You know? start, start now and, and, uh, and become a better version of your entrepreneurial self. Ms. Kim, you want to add something? Yes, and um, just to add on that as well, during my, my, st uh, my master um, stint with Benil, we also had an entrepreneurial uh, entrepreneurship subject. This is where we tested our um kubaga buti nga ngayon eh may hi-fi na eh. We tested my idea first of having a different product. This is not about grinelas. So we tested uh, a cocktail, uh, ready to drink cocktail using traditional beverage, uh, traditional alcoholic beverages. So this was the first pro venture that I um entered into. So and it failed. <laughs> so it failed. It means that I learned from that a lot and this is parang malaking tuition fee siya, but it's worth it. Kubaga, that's what I can say. Kubaga, learning while doing is very important kasi you will only know kapag naginawa mo siya and once you have executed your idea. Otherwise, you will never know. Thank you.